Holy Chapel service will start in... Let your glory
sorrowful times. Oh, yeah. There may be more yet to come, but we do have hope. If you're in him, you have hope. Amen. If you're in him, you have something to look forward to. Amen. Yes. Let us look now to our responsive reading for the morning, Psalms number 122. I hope you have your Bibles. If you have, please turn there and say amen when you amen. found it. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. I will be within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together. Where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, and give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brother and companion's sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because, because of the house of the Lord our God, God I will seek thy good. May the Lord bless the reading, the hearing, and the adhering to his most holy word. You may be seated. For we have. We 
They realize this, how good the Lord has been. Why don't you say thank you? thank you? There's somebody here that knows he's been even better than that. You ought to say thank you. Thank you. There's somebody that's happy to have gotten a hallelujah praise. You ought to lift those hands and shout hallelujah. 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 Turn to your neighbor. Look your neighbor right in the eye and say, neighbor, I love you. I love There's not a thing in the world you can do about it. Turn to another and share that same sentiment by saying, neighbor, I love you, and there's not a thing you can do about it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh.
this is their time, and I want you to help them celebrate uh, this milestone uh, in their work of ministry for the Lord and the house of the Lord. I invite to the podium now the president of this board, none other than our own uh, Sister Cheryl McCall. Come on, give us some love as she comes. First, giving honor to God, who is the head of my life. To our illustrious pastor, Reverend Dr. George L. Thomas. Honor to the memory of our beloved First Lady, Ruby Thomas, who, if she were here, she'd be celebrating her natal birthday tomorrow. I just want to take one minute and I want all of us to say happy birthday Rue when I count to three. One, two, three. Happy, happy birthday, birthday Rue! Rue. <laughs> she will be loved and cherished forever. the ministers on the rostrum and you my brothers and sisters in Christ I'm kind of going off my script this morning I just I thank God for Pastor Thomas because he's here with us no matter what no matter what happens he's here and I just want to acknowledge all of the teachers up under him starting with Sister Loretta Chateau Sister Mary Davis, Sister Faye Smith, Sister Sharon Woodard Davis, Sister Kim Jordan, our own Reverend Archie Porter, Deacon Ulysses Dunlop. I thank God for Francis, Reverend Francis Sykes this morning and I thank God for Holy Chapel I love Holy Chapel each and every one of you each and every one of you I love you unconditionally he's the man of the hour I, <laughs> we love you too Reverend Prince and we thank God for you and your ministry and your teachings it's all the teachings that come together and help a person like me. You guys don't know where I come from, but God pulled me from the miry pit. And he cleaned me up, he dusted me off, he set my feet on solid ground. And for the rest of my days, as long as I'm breathing, I'm going to worship him. So if you see me jumping up and down in the back, Thank God that I'm not a teenager, because if I was, I'd be doing cartwheels all the way up to the, um, that's how happy I am about his grace and his mercy. The ushers, I feel like we are a chosen few. We are a blessed group, you know. Um, when I look in the old uh, directories, man, there's so many ushers, enough to fill the whole church. And 
2023, there's just a handful of us. <laughs> In 2 Corinthians 12, 10, it says, for when I'm weak, then I am strong. And even though they're just a few of us in number, we speak in volumes as we represent our Lord and Savior and Holy Chapel Church with all that we have in honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. It is with great respect and honor that I stand before you on behalf of the ushers and first aiders. The young lady that I'm about to present to you is a God-fearing woman. She's small in stature with a loving heart. Love is a verb. It's an action word. In everything she does, it's done with love. She's a devoted mother, grandmother, sister, usher, and friend. I present to you our own sister, Dorothy McCullough. Cheryl, thank you, Cheryl, for the uh, for the introduction. I was wondering when you were gonna sit down. <laughs> okay. I love you, Cheryl. You know, you know I love you, Cheryl. You always she likes to talk a lot, you guys. She really does. And sometimes I go, Cheryl, cool, yeah, yeah, quiet, yeah. Uh, you know. And and then Cheryl, it's not like that. I have to talk to Cheryl a lot, you guys. She jumps up and down back there, and she's so happy, and her life has really changed, and so uh, she exhibits that all the time. Giving honor to God and to my pastor and also to our uh, congregation, I just am grateful to be here today and serve as the uh, mistress of ceremonies. Of course, I'm nervous, uh, like always. My heart, I looked at my heart rate. I'm, I always check my heart rate. <laughs> I always check my heart rate. It's 138 right now. <laughs> Maybe it went down a little. Well, it's down to 100. Okay. Last year, last year I complained about my shoes. You know, I had some, we had purple shoes. That was the first time. They were killing me, and I told you guys about that. So I went and bought me some more shoes for this time, okay? And what happened is I went shopping, looking for the shoes and everything, and then uh, I was so tired from walking, I said, I'm just going to walk into this store, and whatever shoes I can find, I'll take them. And so I took, uh, I saw these shoes, and they were $50 and $60. And I go, I don't care how much they cost, so I'm going to, whatever. So uh, I went to the checkout stand, and the lady goes, oh. And she checked it out. She goes, twenty-seven fifty. I said, thank you, Lord. And then the, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Twenty-seven fifty. There's some cute shoes, y'all. And, and, and the lady at the, at the cashier, she even said, thank you, Lord. Like that. <laughs> So I made somebody happy. <laughs> so anyway, our, time, our theme is uh, working for the Lord. And you all know we as ushers, we, we really do work hard. Like Cheryl said, we are few in numbers. And if some of you want to join, we would surely like it for you to do so. And the first aiders, they're hard workers too, everybody. They, they help us out and they work alone too. And they need more members. So uh, we need more members. Uh, our theme, whatever you do. It's, first of all, it's working for the Lord. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord and not for human masters. Okay. And we're trying to do that as ushers. Well, we're working hard and like the song that they sang first, the senior choir sang first, 99 and a half won't do. We're striving to make 100, everybody. And as we march around, we ask for prayers for uh, you. As we work every day, we ask that you pray for us. Um, also, I just want to say this. Um, 
How many of you count your steps? How many count your steps? You know, I have my little watch here. I count my steps. I get nervous when I don't make my, the steps, you know. I get up to, I've gotten to 5,000. And the other day, I got to 8,000. It's like, what's going on? Why did I get 8,000? Well, we had usher rehearsal, and we walked, marched around this church. <laughs> so I got 8,000, 8,100 steps in, you guys, just because we marched. So we're marching also today. We're marching for the Lord. So I want to... Um, go into the program now and we will have uh, a selection by um, by the senior choir and we thank the senior choir for uh, participating in our program we love you senior choir and our next uh, selection will be by our senior choir
Okay. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. That is what we have come to do to praise the Lord today, everybody, because he is truly wor uh, worthy. Uh, our ushers, we're going to be stepping for the Lord, and that's what we're going. That's what we're here to do. I don't know why I am the MC. I guess because I'm the oldest one on the usher board. Probably the old, one of the oldest ones in this church, but um, I can still march. Okay, even though uh, hey, next on November 7th I'll be 84, but I can still march, everybody, and I'm going to march. And I've been do I've been doing it, marching on the usher board since 1962. So I just want to give God all the honor and glory for every single thing. And um, like I said, um, I don't have much to do up here because only if you notice, I, um, the mistress of ceremony, and then it says selections, and then I sit down, right? That's all I have to do. I'll, I, we, we'll march after that, but um, I'm going to sit down first so I can rest before we march. <laughs> But anyway, we're going to have another uh, selection by the choir, and I'm finished. That's it. That's all. That's it. Okay? Everybody, I don't have nothing else to do. I don't have nothing else to say. But thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting our ushers, and just help us to do what we know to do. Thank you. Selection by the choir.
again, thank you. And now the pulpit is in charge. <laughs> Let the church say amen. amen. Now you can do your thing. It's offering time. You knew what you were going to give when you left home, right? <laughs> amen. So this afternoon, uh, the officers are going to come now that we might receive the offer for the afternoon, amen? amen. Please obey this. Amen. Incidentally, following the offering, we will have uh, <coughs> reports.
Once again, let us say amen. amen. Haven't we had a marvelous time so far? I am so grateful to God uh, to uh, continuously provide his spirit upon our worship and praise. And we've had a good time. Just quiet before I get to the ushers. This senior choir uh, has been off the chain today. And I, it's been a long time since I, I well, Brother Willie and, and Brother uh, Steve, uh, Stephen has done a great job working with the choir. However, it just does my heart well to see Sister Rochelle orchestrate this choir. Amen. Rochelle still has it, and she's been doing it for many years, and it's still marvelous to see her efforts in coordinating the voices that the Lord has placed under her care. And so we pray for her as well. Now, we've had a good time, and it's not over yet. These ushers are worthy to be celebrated. Somebody ought to say amen. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell among the tent of the wicked. And so we honor you, ushers, and we bless you in Jesus' name that your service will not be in vain. And you're looking good, every one of you. Give, give them some love. They're looking good. Amen. They're looking very good. Then we thank God for this staff of ministers that we have here as well. Um, our own Reverend Pastor Francis Sykes, whose name has not been called, but whose presence has been felt. Give her some love. Reverend Pastor. Good to have you in the house. Good to have you in the house. Uh, Pastor George Thomas Jr. has uh, stuck his head in and he had to leave to go back to his church. But we have the Honorable Reverend Archie Porter. Amen. Amen. And we have a word from the Lord uh, from our own Reverend Ralph Prince today. <laughs> Let us pray that the Spirit of the Lord will move him and move through him and move us too. Amen. Amen. And so I am honored, I'm honored to be able to, I don't have to introduce him because you all know him, uh, but I'm happy to present him who's going to be our keynote speaker for the morning. Um, and it's still morning afternoon. Amen. And we'll be out of here. Don't worry about it. We'll be out of here in time enough to go to Sunday school. Watch and see. <laughs> see how I just slipped that right on in there? Sunday school is still important. And uh, this choir is scheduled to do another song before the preacher preaches. And uh, um, I'm going to let the Lord have his way with the program. But after the choir has rendered their selection, then the next voice you will hear will be that of the Reverend Ralph Prince. Let the church say amen. <laughs>
Aren't you glad that prayer changes things? Talking to God just makes a difference. You know he loves you. He brought you out to worship. And you didn't sit, come out here just to sit. But you called, came out to praise him. Thank him. Love him. For he lets us know that he's a God of love. A God of purpose and his will is that none should perish but that all shall come to repentance and you know 99 and a half uh, we should have some praying folks here today <laughs> just won't do I come here on Sundays. You come here for this uh, on Sundays. You read your Bible. You pray because 99 and a half just won't do. But the more you learn about him, the more you praise him and realize without him. I wish I had some praying folks. We, you know, the preacher might come if y'all pray. Just, just pray. What a wonderful, wonderful usher boy Amen. and first aiders that we have here at Holy Chapel. Give them a big hand. Jesus said that uh, he was gone his way, going to Jerusalem to die for you and my sins. And he heard some noise in the back, and the disciples were talking. And he looked back and said, what, you, what y'all talking about? What is it? I mean, you, we, we're on our way, and, uh, but you all talking. What are you talking about? He said, well, Lord, what we're talking about is uh, when you get in your kingdom. I wish I had some praying folk. When you get into your kingdom, we're just trying to find out. We we measuring ourselves. Who's going to be the greatest? Doesn't it seem like it's always what's in it for me? Those twelve men saved the world. God took twelve to change the world. They went in, in Philippi and and, and 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 they were there and. And it says that they, Paul and Silas, had set the world upside down. And you know he's still able to do that because, because without him, we could do nothing. I, I love that song that the, uh, the choir sung. He says, my help. I have trials and I have tribulations, but my help. It can't always be my way. It's not always going to be my way. I'm going to have some disappointment. I may be sick, but my health. All of it. Not some. Not part way. Not just on Monday. Not on just week. But all. My health. Come from the Lord. Thank you, ushers. For your service. Thank you for the joy that we see when we come to that door. I've never seen any of you frowning. Never seen any of you trying to look away, but, but you're always there to show the love of God. Because we are his people. We are changed. We, we become new. I wish I had some praying for creations. In Christ Jesus. And that's something to be proud about. That's something you could, you could say, Lord, I may not be all that, I, that you want me to be. But I sure am glad I'm not what I used to be. So thank you. And 
And I appreciate so much just to be on the program. Because when you're serving God, he says that you will know that you are my disciples. Not be because how you could preach or how you could deacon or how you could say. But you are my people. And I'm so glad that this program, give this uh, usher board a hand. To Pastor Thomas and to Pastor Sykes and Pastor Sykes, it's so good to see you. When she walked in the door, I just started grinning because I knew I had some help. When, she, when I see her, she's such a beautiful person, a great pastor, and a great preacher. Amen. And to Reverend Porter and to you deacons and my brothers and sisters in Christ. God is a good God. God is all knowing. God is all power. And if you just hold on to his hand, one thing I can guarantee you, he will never take his hand from you. Never, never take his hands from you. But it's always we to take our hands from him. Turn with me in your Bibles to Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24. That's Colossians chapter 3, 23 to 24. And Paul here is talking to the church, the, to the church at Colossae. And he says in verse 23, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartfully as to the Lord. Anything you're going to do, make, make its purpose, make its, make its focus, make what you're showing and what you're doing, make it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. That's right. Knowing that of the Lord, he shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. As we look at our theme this morning, we find Paul writing to the church of Colossae, which was close to Ephesus and Laodicea. It was an important city with a large population. Paul himself never visited that city, but as recorded in Colossians 1, 7 and 8, he tells them, I've heard about you. I heard from Epiphras, who was in prison with Paul at the time. Now, Paul, you know, uh, most wrote most of the New Testament. And the places that he set up churches, you know, are many are, are books of the Bible. He, he went to Rome, and there we have a chapter for Rome. He, he, he went to Ephesus. And there was a church at Ephesus. He went to Philippi, and there was a church in Philippi. Everywhere he went, he had set up churches. But he had never been to, Col to Colossia. But you know what he did do? No, he had heard about what they had done. He had heard that God, people were being saved. He had heard that the word of God was being preached. And he heard it from another prisoner that came from that city. Sometimes we think we do things and sometimes things are going on and we think, oh, I, I, nobody called my name. Pastor called all them names and missed me. <laughs> Who 
Are y'all going to pray with me? But, but what you do for God, you don't need all the crowd to praise you. God sees everything that you do. And he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, show some love. If you love me, do what you can for others. If you love me. Because he told uh, uh, his disciples when he met that blind young man, and he'd been blind from the birth, the disciples said, why is he blind from the birth? He says he's blind from the birth so that, that my word and, and my power that you could see. He says, as long as I'm in the world, I wish I had some praying for you. As long as I'm in the world, I'm the light in the world. And the only light he has is you. As long as we are trying to help. Oh, did I say that? I wonder who said that. As long as we help somebody, God's work is being done. As long as we help somebody, God, people that have no hope, have hope. If you're looking at your TV and getting the news and stuff, that's not lights. If we didn't have the lights in the world, if God's presence wasn't in the world, if he didn't have disciples like you and me, this world would be destroyed. Don't let nobody tell you there's no hope. There's always going to be more folks for God than there are for... I wish I had some prayer for them. Sometimes we're not vocal enough. Sometimes we, 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 you know, we, we come to church and, 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 and worship and everything, and, and, and we try to do good, and, and, and then we go outside, and Lord have mercy. Holy on Sunday, but on Monday. <laughs> James. The brother of Jesus put it this way. How can you say you love God? Oh, I got some help here. Come on. If you got some help, how can you love God who you haven't seen? Help me, somebody. And hate your neighbor that you see every day. When we're trying, when you see confusion and, and mistrust and envy and jealousy and all that, that's not of God. That's of the Satan. And the more you come to this worship place, the more you get on your knees. I've gotten a habit now when I wake up in the morning, I say thank you. Because when you sleep, you know, you, you, you go on, you out of it. But God has to come and touch you yes. in the morning. Oh. It's not the alarm clock that woke you up. your neighbor. Talk about the preacher.
can you do that? It's not in politics. It's, it's, it's not in uh, 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 war or, or all that kind of stuff. It's how you treat one another. I don't care how you big you get in corporate America or how big you get in, in, in the religious uh, uh, things. And, and how you, it doesn't matter. How do you treat people? Daddy had only a sixth grade education, but he's the most wisest man I've ever known. You know why? And everybody liked my daddy. Because my daddy knew how to treat people. Amen. You can't be up here thinking you better than anybody else. You, you can't go around thinking that, oh, you know, woe is me. Everything's happening to me. No. You got God on your side. And if God is for you, it's more than the world against you. Amen. Y'all praying with me? Amen. So Paul got the news what was happening in, in, in Colossia uh, by this man who came there and was in prison with Paul. Amen. And, 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 and he declared uh, to Paul, things are going all right over there. Paul didn't have to go there. You know, sometimes you can just pray for folk. And, you know, there's only so much we can do. We're just human. But God could do all things. But you got to have, if you, if you don't have, if you don't have them in your heart, it can't be shown because you're faking it. I know we don't have nobody like that in here. I'm, I'm talking about that church over there. Are y'all praying with this preacher? <laughs> Amen. Uh, yeah, so, so he says to you, if, if you're going to be my disciple, if you're going to be uh, my light, you've got to know something about me. And you can't be iffy. You know, you, you, I hear preachers talk about, uh, and other people, I, I was born in the church. Well, I tell you this, I was nine months knowing about the Lord before I even got here. <laughs> Mama, every Sunday morning, brought me in there. Uh, anybody else got that testimony? <laughs> Got me in there. So you, you're hearing that preacher. You may, you may just be, you know, just a, you're growing, but, but, th but that res resonates in you. Jeremiah says, before you even got here, I knew you and could call you to be one of his disciples. Amen? Nobody tells you it's going to be easy. It's, uh, uh, you may not always get the pat on the back and, 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 and what you've done, but know that God sees you and God blesses you. He blesses you by the more you get of him in, you, in, your, in your flesh and in your body. That's how come it's so important. You read this Bible. Just don't wait, just don't wait, for, uh, wait to Sunday. Pray every day. Say thank you every day. When you open your eyes, just say thank you. A lot of folks thought they were going to be here this morning. They are gone. But you're here. I love Pastor always say, he, he says, if all this could be going around you, trials and tribulations, but you're still here. And you're here only by the grace of God. So thank him. Praise him. Amen. Amen. Call somebody that you haven't talked to in a long time. People that you're missing here, even here at church. Call them and see how they're doing. Amen. Because this journey is not given to the swift. It's not given to the strong. But it's that him that endureth 
and endureth to the end. You got to have God in you. Y'all praying with me? We thank God for our ushers. They, they own, they're there every Sunday. Like I said, I never came in there and they was, had a, a sad face. They all, look, look at them there. They're grinning, they grinning right now. You see them? God called them. Before they even see what the preacher looks like, before they even hear the choir, they, you, when they come in, they see them. And they stand in, they stand in there. Pray for them. You know, when you're dealing with folks, you're dealing with, oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> you you, you got to have some Jesus in you or something, because some of these folks is. But don't worry about it. Don't let them. Get you down or feel that you, you don't have what you need. You know, you come into work or you come into church. Uh, oh, it's such a good day. What's so good about it? And the key is they don't know what to do with that sin that so easily besets them. But you do. You put it at the foot of Jesus and leave it there. You ain't going to change no grown folk. I'm not going to say that. But, uh, but, but thank God for these ushers, amen? amen? They are filled with the Spirit, and if you're going to do God's will, you've got to have that Spirit. Amen? amen. And it's got to be in your heart. Amen? I, I, I notice, you know, it's always been, I've always liked children and everything. And, and everything. But you know a child, they could just look you. They could be a baby. And when they see you, they'll smile. They haven't lived to be 20, 30, 40. But there's something about in you, your presence, your, your, your connection. that even a child will see that. So it's in your heart. So, so, so what are the components of that? First of all, you got to have love. And let me tell you this, love gives more than it receives. God so loved the world that he gave. I'm trying to help somebody here. You got to have that love, that connection, the, 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 the I care. Amen. It's not what you receive, it's what you give. That's the love, the heart. That's how, that's how come the scripture is talking about you work with people as you would be working with God. If God came up to you, what are you going to say to him? You ain't going to give him all that <laughs> chucking and jiving. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't gonna, you're not, you're not going to lie to him. That's God. Well, why can't you? God, we're made in his image and likeness. So why can't you sit, treat your neighbor the same way? Because everybody, I don't care if you're coming to this world and you might turn out to be a mass, whatever. You got, you, you got that in you when you were born. It's in you for the one that you're going to feed, the one that you're going to respect. It's in you. Jeremiah said before you even came, he knew you. So don't let that die. Don't let that make, have you uh, uh, messed up thinking that people don't like you or uh, what do I have to do? Or, no, you got God in you. Just rate, let, it, let it work. Let it work. You'll be more happy. You'll see. Just look at what he's done for you. And if he's done it for you, somebody help me. What, if he does it for you, what's going to happen? He'll do it for what? Father. Oh, God, I got 
got some preachers here. And then somebody, somebody said, it's no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. What's the other component that, that, that makes you, uh, uh, the, uh, our theme says, uh, treat others as like you're working for the Lord. Not for the slap on the back. Amen. So we have joy, love. Then we have peace. And Jesus says, my peace is not the peace that you experience in the world. My peace. You could take it anywhere. When things are up, you still have peace. When things are down, you still have peace. When things don't look right, trials and tribulations, you still have peace because all of your help it doesn't come from what you have. It doesn't come from where you work. It doesn't come from where you live. All your help comes from the God and that image. That image, that likeness, show it. I'm about to sit down. Show it. Amen. So you have love. You have peace. And then the other great thing is you have a joy. Oh, that joy. You don't, you don't have to hear that, you know, where you where, where I used to go sometime and you feel you had to go to Get joy. <laughs> I got it now every day I wake up. I got joy. Even when sometimes I've been sick, I've, I've had open heart surgery, I had a, a bypass, but I still have joy because I know God is who he says he is. He'll wake me up. He'll be with you to the end. He'll be with you to the end. Amen. So those are three components. So uh, Jesus is telling us, and, uh, and, the, and the theme is telling us, whatever you do, work as it is what you would do for God. I'm through. I'm through. But I hope I've left something with you that, that lets you know that you're not alone. You're not fighting this battle. The battle's already been won. It's happened two, over 2,000 years ago on, on a hill called Calvary. They marched him through the city. They put thorns on his head. Amen. They pierced him in his side. And yet, he still stayed there. Didn't say a mumbling word. He, he, he stayed there uh, uh, f from the third to the sixth hour. There was a... Uh, a, a Roman uh, 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 captain there that was observing what was going on. And he, he didn't believe in God because they all served Caesar. But after he saw God hanging there on the tree, and after he saw, even after they had pierced him in his side, and he heard him say, God, forgive them. For they know not what they do. The scripture says that after it was all done, he looked. He says, there's Jesus. Look what he's gone through. All the punishment, all the blood, all that. This must be. This has to be. This has to be. The Christ. This has to be. Your God. Like that centurion, you got to realize that he is Jesus the Christ. God bless you. He is. He said he was. He is. Alpha and Omega. He is. The bright and morning star. He is.
Praise the Lord, saints. I don't know about you, but if you don't feel the spirit in this place, something wrong. Thank you. Prince, he preached out of his soul. And now it's time for someone to make up your mind whose side you're going to be on. Are you going to be on the Lord's side? Are you going to be on that 